Okay. <clears throat> All right, you guys. So a couple things uh, to do today. I want to talk about um, some logistics stuff, and then um, continue our discussion about um, coastal zone management. Our introduction to coastal zone management. Coastal trail. <laughs> sorry. Isabel, there's something like a question. Oh, sorry. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, anyway, so we always have some logistics stuff first, and then we'll get into the content um, uh, later. So um, while people are still uh, coming on, uh, maybe I'll wait for the Central Coast trip. Maybe we'll start with our survey first. So let me just um, update you guys as to where we are with our survey. Um, okay, so last time we, um, we or two weeks ago, we did a quick run through, just want to do another quick run through. Things haven't changed a lot, some things have, but, but most things haven't changed that much. We're still, we're still pretty light, we only have about 380 respondents, right, our target was 1000, so we're way short of that, but we want to get at least to 500. So the original goal was to shut this thing down as of yesterday, so it ended in October. But I think we'll go a few more days just to see if we can get it knocked up to um, 500. So we'll have at least a, a decent um, sampling. So we have one more round of you guys um, uh, suggesting some links and posting it, and then we'll shut it down probably on Friday. We'll close it. Um, but anyway, I just want to update you guys where we are right now. So um, general stuff, this hasn't changed uh, particularly that much. We have a bit more urban folks, um, the proportion of folks that were in, that reported living in an urban area went up and um, a slight decrease in the people that thought that um, expenses were really, really difficult. But other, the other, other general aspects seem to have mostly stayed the same. Um, same thing here in terms of people visiting nature, uh, not a huge difference. Um, so we see the same idea, which is people are still going out into nature, but but they've uh, um, they're going less frequently. So it's not as if they're completely abandoning going out out and about, but they're they're doing it with less frequency. Um, the same thing with beaches. This has this didn't change that much either, um, but same story there. Um, uh, we saw an increase in, as, as the sample size has been getting bigger, we've seen an increase in people that are staying close to home. And so, so only leaving their home, um, you know, very little. Um, and so the 41% is an increase from, um, from our initial uh, sampling. Um, uh, this hasn't changed that much. This was, this was people that experienced severe restrictions versus what they're doing now. Actually, this, this proportion, the proportion of people that, that are currently experiencing severe restrictions has gone down, which might be totally understandable. When we started this in you know, late September, um, there were more, um, at least in the state of California, there were more uh, uh, people in the purple or the, or the most constrained level. And so as we go forward, more counties in the last month have, have sort of come out of that uh, most restrictive tier. Interesting, because of the surge, or what appears to be mounting surge, we might be getting ready to go more into uh, more constraints. But uh, so far, at least, that this, this sort of makes sense, that people are over time are getting less restrictive. Um, uh, this, was, this hasn't changed very much. This is people feeling safe in open spaces. Um, generally, people, uh, and again, this is, this is two, the way this was coded was two was very safe, one was safe, zero was neutral. So just about everybody or, or all, all the groups reported feeling at least somewhat safe, right? It, it was on the positive side of things. The average, none of the average respondents uh, in any of the categories were uh, negative. But um, uh, as we go through time, um, there's a big, uh, big change in terms of people's uh, feeling safe. And so there's a drop in 2015 compared to before 9-11. And then uh, uh, this year, obviously, um, while this question was, we introduced this several years ago in terms of people feeling unwelcome or, or you know, those types of things culturally. But this really probably is most obviously reflecting the fact that people just don't feel safe because of the virus um, uh, in this day and age. 
Um, similar in terms of people's driving. Um, uh, uh, went up a little teeny bit. Again, this is, a, this is a little bit high in terms of people's responses to climate change. And so um, I would expect it to be more like around 85 or so, or 84, um, something like that in terms of people that, that's, I mean, love to see it higher, it's great, but, but I don't know if we're, we're sampling um, uh, as representative of a, a chunk of the population, but nevertheless, it's still high 80s. People think we should do something about climate change. <clears throat> Um, again, I guess before two thirds of the po population think that, yeah, it made sense to close our beaches. Um, these percentages shifted a little bit, but virtually nothing significantly in terms of what is influencing. They're going to the coast, they're going to the beach. Um, same thing, no big difference in terms of the waste change. Um, no difference in terms of frequency of people are asking about seafood or how much they're consuming. The um, amount, the, the number of ounces of seafood hasn't changed. Um, and the amount of plastic, uh, these, these little, these individual categories shifted slightly, but the aggregate categories um, didn't change a whole, a, a huge amount. So, so more than half or about half of the population says that they're using more plastic now. And um, only about a fifth of the population uh, reports using uh, less plastic than before the onset of the pandemic. And again, here, here are uh, people's change in consumption. And these, I think, I think something like beef and coffee switch places or something compared to last time, or maybe beef and alcohol, I can't remember. But um, as far as our class goes, the, the seafood products, the marine products have not changed. So, so sh shellfish is still the thing that people report consuming much more than before the pandemic. Uh, and fish is uh, the number four most, um, uh, uh, increased item in their diet. So that's of note. Um, uh, this did shift a lot. This, this, um, the rankings here shifted a lot. Uh, in general, um, all right, let me, I'll start from the top. So overfishing and coastal development, those were the same. Uh, those were in the same positions. Those are the least, um, uh, the least uh, problematic or people saw them as the, as the least difficult in this array of things to solve. So overfishing relatively easy, dealing with coastal development relatively easy. This cholesterium, remember, is a made up thing. That's a nonsensical, non-existing thing. So that's our, that's our measure of error. So the best answer for that was people should say, I don't know or neutral. And, and again, this scale here, these are all things that are tough, right? So, so everything, so this, if, if the value is right on this line, it would be, it would be neither easy nor hard to do. Um, and then as we go this way, as we, as we, as the um, bars grow larger to the left, that indicates in this, in this representation, a greater difficulty, uh, relative difficulty in solving the challenge. So because this is essentially error, we would say, and we have, haven't we haven't calculated it yet, but but you know there's gonna be some error around here. So that's telling us that overfishing and coastal development is it's hard to see um, there's any difference with those. And the same for aging electrical grid in Sierra Nevada forests, hardly to see if there's anything different from that from a baseline, just you know neither hard nor easy type of um, thing. Uh, some of these categories switched around. And, and you remember this cholesterol was was way up here in the middle when we did the first uh, interim uh, look into the data. COVID nineteen it remains about dead center as it, as it was before. Um, again, people aren't too interested in their privacy apparently. That, that's a relatively um, minor thing. Nor are they interested in in nuclear proliferation, which seems to be a huge thing to me. But uh, what do I know? Um, okay, so then we have, again, the environment, ge generic environmental things, terrestrial focused uh, are the, I've imaged those in the brown tan color. And then the coastal ones, again, are in the aqua color. Uh, oh, wait, why is, why is racism aqua? Oh, geez, I didn't, I didn't do it right, sorry. So uh, sea level should be, this should be purple and racism, or sorry, sea level should be uh, blue down here. So our, our coastal, focus things, overfishing, coastal development, sea level rise and microplastics are here. So um, um, yeah, uh, and, and then again, as before, political polarization was viewed as the greatest, um, the hardest thing to, to deal with, the greatest difficulty in terms of uh, societal challenges facing us. 
so interesting again that that our coastal issues come out very high and very low um, depending on who's uh, on, on uh, what the options are we're discussing um, we're getting more representation across the US which is cool um, and we're getting more representation across California. So if you remember last time we had uh, not that many counties represented, now we're doing a much better job of, uh, of getting some better um, um, geographic distribution. So there's still a lot we can hit in terms of some of the coastal counties as well as some of the inland areas, but um, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well in terms of that. So um, we're gonna do one more targeting of, of pushing out stuff. So what I like you, so, sorry, there you go. So what I'd like you guys to do today is to repost. So all those ones you've already sent out, if you could just do one more post to them and just say final notice, you know, last, uh, last week of survey or something like that. And then you could just repost whatever you sent before. And, and if you, and if, and if you could, it would be great if you could just say a quick, thank you for anyone that has already completed um, or ha has already taken our survey. Um, and then we have some, new targets um, and uh, I'll talk about that. So let me share this with you right now. Um, I find that here, right? So we have one more to go. So this is, this is that same document, just added a, added a new tab. So if you guys could just click on that, we'll take a quick look at it while, while, you're, um, while you're doing that. And why can't, why is this chat in my way? Okay, and so then as before, I've given you guys some blanks. And so this is the last time we're doing this, right? But again, you're just gonna, so everybody's name should be up here and you guys have an array. So I've mixed it up a bit, everybody. So we're um, doing pretty well in terms of LA County, doing pretty well in terms of Ventura County, could always use more, but we are pretty weak. I think we only have like five or 10 responses or something like that from Santa Barbara. So I've put Santa Barbara in everybody's, in everybody's targets. And then I've just sort of rotated through about some of the counties so that we can get some different uh, representations. So everybody has, a certain number of assigned counties and they have just some some other blanks you could you could do Santa Barbara Ventura anywhere else but new ones please do new ones so um, that's going to be for today so again if you guys could fill out uh, the link you're going to target the organization and, and your motivation that would be great and so I'll take a quick break here I'll pause our recording